The American Civil War took place during the Industrial Revolution, which generated some of history's craziest technologies. Unsurprisingly, creative geniuses of that time attempted to find new and unusual ways of defeating the enemy. All strange weapons in this list were available to Union and Confederate forces. Winan's Steam Gun This centrifugal gun, reportedly capable of firing 300 rounds of ammunition per minute from its steam-powered spinning drum for 100 yards, rose to notoriety during the 1861 Baltimore riots. Built by Ohio engineers William Joslin and Charles Dickinson, this huge automatic weapon was mounted on an armored train carriage. When chaos and riots erupted in Baltimore between secessionists and the U.S. government, and the city feared an invasion by federal forces, the gun was confiscated by police. After the crisis ended, Dickinson attempted to smuggle the gun out of Baltimore, but it was caught by federal soldiers and later displayed as a war prize in Massachusetts. The Union Army never attempted to use the device in combat, implying that the steam gun did not live up to its fearsome reputation. Coal Torpedo In the 19th century, a torpedo referred to any type of bomb. So the coal torpedo designed by Thomas Courtney in 1864 was exactly as advertised, a gunpowder bomb disguised by real pieces of black coal and used as a sabotage weapon by the Confederacy's Secret Service Corps against steam-powered Union ships. The devices were loaded or smuggled into ships transporting coal. The bombs detonated as workers tried to fuel the furnace. Two ships have been damaged by coal torpedo detonations. Another sabotage attempt against the Springfield Armory included putting a timing fuse on a coal torpedo, but the bomb was detected in time. The coal torpedo saw increased use following the war when ship owners attempted insurance fraud by blowing up their own boats. During World War II, a modified version of the coal torpedo was used. It was equipped with plastic explosives. Harmonica pistol. The harmonica gun took its name from the odd side-sliding ammunition clip that fitted into its side. J. Jarre of Paris, a Frenchman, most likely invented and patented the gun between 1859 and 1862. The slide would be supplied with 10 rounds of 58 caliber balls that would fire as soon as the shot was fired via a percussion cap. Every shot included powder. The shooter just pushed or slid the clip to the next shot before replacing the cap and firing again. Apparently, not many were made, but some made it past the federal blockade during the American Civil War and saw some brief combat. The harmonica pistol was too impractical for widespread use. The easier and faster firing revolver eventually won the day. The mechanism wasn't exclusive to pistols. Famous Texas Senator Sam Houston owned a percussion rifle with a harmonica slide, which is now on exhibit at the National Museum of American History. USS Alligator and H.L. Hunley The U.S. Navy's first submarine, the 47-foot-long USS Alligator, was launched in 1862. The Alligator, designed by French inventor Brutus de Villeroy, whose own government refused to build his remarkable machine, was referred to as a submersible warship and used certain revolutionary features for its time, including an air purifying system and a lockout chamber that allowed a diver to be deployed outside the submerged vessel. The US administration kept the project a secret, aiming to use it to counter Confederate ironclads. Alligator's initial trip on the Appomattox River was unsuccessful because the water was too shallow. The submarine was sent to the Navy Yard in Washington to be reassembled with a screw propeller. When Alligator was being carried to its next destination in Charleston, South Carolina, a massive storm forced the tow ship to cut the rope. Alligator drowned at the graveyard of ships off Cape Hatteras. During the Civil War, the Confederate States Navy also built its own submarine, the H.L. Hunley. The Hunley was developed and built in Mobile, Alabama, and is named after its main financial backer, Horace L. Hunley. It went down three times during practice runs and attempts to strike blockading Union warships, losing many lives, including Hunley's. Raised once more, it successfully used a spar torpedo to sink the Union sloop Housatonic 
on February 17, 1864. However, the Hunley and its eight crew members were lost shortly after the attack. Coffee Mill Gun The Gatling gun is well known among many. The Devil's Coffee Mill, Coffee Grinder Gun, Army in a Box, or a Gar Gun was a hand-cranked machine gun that fired 120 rounds per minute with 58 caliber ammo. President Abraham Lincoln is believed to have fallen in love with the weapon after watching a demonstration in 1861. He quickly placed an order to purchase all 10 available guns for $1,300 each, about $44,500 in 2024. In the end, the US War Department acquired 60 coffee mill weapons. However, field commanders believed they had thrown away too much valuable bullets. During usage, the single barrel quickly overheated and hopper-fed cartridges frequently jammed, making the guns useless. According to one story, Lieutenant Colonel George Vincent Fosbury of Webley Fosbury Automatic Revolver fame stated that after shooting 100 rounds in a minute, the weapon's barrel burned white hot with melted metal oozing from the muzzle. Due to these issues, the guns had minimal use during the war. A few were assigned to guard possibly vulnerable locations, such as bridges. The Confederate States also captured 17 Agar guns, which were used rarely. In 1864, one was used to attack a Union observation balloon. That was the first anti-aircraft use of machine guns in history. Pike The Pike, a two-handed infantry weapon dating from antiquity, is made of a wooden shaft about 6 to 10 feet long and capped with a sharp steel spike. In an age of gunpowder and projectile weapons, the pike would be seen to be outdated. However, because the Confederacy had problems producing or importing weapons, soldiers were occasionally given cheaper and easier to make pikes. The majority were ordinary models, while a handful had customized blades. Georgia Governor Joe Brown issued an order in 1862 to supply local forces with 10,000 pikes, some with three blades in a cloverleaf pattern and others with a spring-loaded retractable blade. One disadvantage of lances was that they were only useful in a charge and were difficult to carry through deep forests. Rush's lances recognized the burden they were carrying and abandoned their lances in May 1863. Needless to say, soldiers did not exactly love the pike, especially when confronted with US troops equipped with rifles. As the governor said, the short-range pike and terrible knife, when brought within their proper range and wielded by a stalwart patriot's arm, never fail to hit and never waste a single load. Armored Railroad Car To protect railway bridges from Confederate attacks and sabotage, the US government ordered experimental armored railroad cars, also known as ironclads or a ironclad battery, which were baggage cars or box cars fitted with thick iron sheets on the top and sides and hooked to the front and back of a locomotive. Portholes on the sides and front or back of the car let the 50 armed men inside to return fire or shoot a miniature cannon or pivot gun at their enemy. At least a few different versions were created, including one that featured a flat car with a metal shell built over it. In 1864, a fortunate Confederate cannon shot wrecked an armored train car. Another was struck by a shell in 1865, injuring the soldiers inside. Some were seized by Confederate forces. Porter Turret Rifle T.P. Porter's failed attempt to improve the single-shot rifle resulted in the many-chambered cylinder firearm. The turret rifle design appears possible. Shots of 48 caliber ammunition were placed in a wheel-shaped nine-round magazine and as each shot was fired, the wheel turned to position the next round. Unfortunately, in practice, this meant that for every bullet aimed forward at the target, another was aimed backward toward the shooter. This made users anxious, and the weapon did not gain popularity among the general public, but Civil War soldiers carried personal weapons like these. Another variation included a magazine with 30 balls, gunpowder, and percussion caps. Rotating the turret filled each chamber, preparing them for firing. Of course, a single misfire or stray spark would cause the entire magazine to explode in the shooter's palm. 
only around 1,250 Porter rifles in three designs were produced, and they saw limited use during the American Civil War. Double Barrel Cannon By combining two different cannon barrels, the 1862 inventor of this oddity thought the six-pounder weapon could fire a devastating round of chain shot, two cannonballs linked by a length of chain. The plan was for both barrels to fire simultaneously, throwing the chain shot hurtling among enemy soldiers. Unfortunately, the prototype's initial field test proved to be a failure. The barrels did not fire at the same moment, causing the chain shot to fly far off target or the chain to break. Regardless, the gun was kept by the city to use as a defense weapon throughout the war. However, it was never used. The concept was obviously not new. During the 17th century English Civil War, the Earl of Northampton's troops owned a double barrel cannon named Elizabeth Henry. Now it serves as a landmark in Athens, Georgia. 